please remain seated as we do our morning song. It's glory, glory, hallelujah, since I lay my burdens down. Friends don't treat me. Friends don't treat me like they used to since I laid my burdens down. Friends don't treat me like they used to since I laid my burdens down. Every round goes high and high. Every round. Since I lay, since I lay my burdens down, every round, every round goes higher and higher. Since I lay my burdens down, burdens down, Lord, burdens down, Lord, burdens down. Glory, 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 hallelujah, since I lay, since I lay my burdens down, glory, glory, hallelujah, since I lay my burdens down. Would you please stand for the reading of the Holy Word? Good morning. Good morning. What a great day to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. I'll be reading from Acts chapter 6. Again, I'll be reading from Acts, after, Act, Acts chapter 6, excuse me. <laughs> and I'll be uh, reading from uh, the New King James Version. Once found, say amen. Amen. And the reading is thus. Now in those days, when the number of the disciples was multiplying, there arose a complaint against the Hebrews by the Hellenists because their widows were neglected in the daily distribution. Then the 12 summoned the multiple multitude of the disciples and said, it is not desirable that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Therefore, brethren, seek out from among you seven men of good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom, who we may appoint over, the, over this business, but we will give ourselves continuity to prayer, continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And the saying ple pleased the whole multitude, and they chose Stephen, 
a man full of faith and the Holy Spirit. And Philip, Procurus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenius, Nicholas, Proselyte from Antioch, who they say they set before the apostles, and when they had prayed, they laid hands on them. Mm -hmm. Then the word of God spread, and the number of the disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem, and great many, and great many of the priests were obedient to the faith. Bless the hearers, doers, and believers of the holy word. Amen. Amen. Shall we pray? Dear Master, Father Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, we come this morning, Lord, first to say thank you, Lord. When I woke up this morning, I looked around my house. Nobody was ready to go to the cooling board. You watched though everyone in this sanctuary. You watched over us all night long. And you woke us up this morning with that touch. Wasn't the alarm clock. Wasn't somebody saying, get up. You touched us, each one of us this morning and said, arise. And we woke up, I hope, with you on our minds. I did. And I thank you, Lord, for being my God. And my God all by yourself. I mean, I'm not worried about a lot of things that happened in my life. Because you said, you're going to take care of me. And that's what I'm depending on. That's what I'm leaning on. That's what I'm going by. I'm going by your word. Because I believe everything that's in your word, it wouldn't be there. You cannot be made out of a lie. I keep watching things on TV about the how the world was made, the big bang and all. God, you said, let there be, and you, everything came. And then you were so gracious that you got down on your hands and knees, molded yourself a man, and made a woman. Satan got in the middle of it, messed up a lot of it up. But you have provided a way for each one of us to get back to you. Because when you went to that cross, Lord, you took all the sins of the world. You hung there and bled and died. Then you got up with all power. Not some power, all power. So whenever we are down, trodden, whenever we, we are saddened, whenever we need some uplifting, whenever, whatever we need, you are there for us with all that power. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for everything you've done for us. Because we know none of it. We didn't do none of it by ourselves. Dear Master, bless this service. Help it to be what you want it to be. Bless the man of God that's going to preach your word. Bless our pastor. Bless his family. Bless each Minister is standing here, sitting here on this pulpit with me and the deacons and each member of this house. Dear Master, come by and visit us this day. Fill the house with your glory. Let us feel your presence. I need to touch. Things have gone on in my life. I've lost loved ones and other people here have lost loved ones. I got family members that asking for prayer. And you know who they are, Lord. I won't name all of them. But everyone in here needs some prayer. So, Lord, come by and bless us. Help us out. Uplift us. Bless those people inside the rest homes, the, the hospitals. Wherever sickness is, Lord, go by and let them know you're a doctor that never lost a case. 
Then God, go by the jail house, the prisons, the asylums. Let those people know, even though they did a lot of wrong, they can still make it to into your kingdom. <clears throat> your master bless those people over Ukraine. Ukraine. They didn't do anything wrong. Just another country want to take over another country just because they want to. God bless them. Turn that man's heart away from this evil he's going through. Mr. Putin, get him straight, Lord. But if Satan's got it in his heart, you can fix him up. You can turn him around. Nothing is impossible for you. Dear Master, bless our men and women. Wherever they may be, but defend our freedom and uplift our, our lives here. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Uh, I know it's a little cloudy outdoors, but Lord, this is another day that you made and allowed us to see. And we thank you. Thank you, Lord. These are all of the blessings I ask. And I love his son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Good morning, everyone. I have your announcements this morning. Please turn your attention to the announcements in your bulletin. Cleanup day will be on April 30th from 9 a.m. until noon. Brotherhood Mother's Day luncheon will be on Saturday, May 7th from noon to 2 p.m. Founders Day picnic is scheduled for May 28th and the time is to be announced. Founders Day celebration will be on Sunday, May 29th during our morning worship service. Please continue to pray for the sick and shut in, and please continue to pray for those who have lost loved ones and for those who are caring for loved ones. May God bless and keep you. Good morning, church. Good morning. I stand before you to let you know, maybe some have heard, others have not, that Pastor Clark went on from labor to rest last week. <coughs> we as a church want to go down and to do our respect for that on Friday. We're going to go down on uh, the van will be available for us to go for all that want to go. The van will leave here at one o'clock on Friday to go to the wake. The wake is from one to six on Friday, and the funeral is on Saturday at 11 o'clock. So I'll get a list out for you. All the ones that want to go. Put your name on the list and we'll be leaving at one o'clock. To God be the glory. Amen. Amen. Hey man, thank you. Deacon Jones, thank you, Sister Katadra Jackson, for those announcements. It's just good to be here today. Amen. We're going to ask you one more time. Because I know you're doing it anyway. Just want to remind you to keep on doing it. Keep on praying for those who have requested prayer. Those on our bulletin, shut in. Those who are in the various uh, facilities. Keep on praying for them. And I, I'll just mention, of course, you know, what Brother what Deacon 
just reminded us of Dr. G.B. Clark home going service. Pray for that family. Pray that God would continue to comfort them. We also ask that you pray for, by name, pray for Sister Mary Smith. Amen. I was told on yesterday, I believe, that she is now, she's at home now, right? Oh, she's not, okay, okay. Let me get that straight. She's not at home yet. Okay. Today, today she's supposed to come. You know how it is when you're in the hospital. If they think they have reason not to let you come, they'll try to encourage you to stay. Well, let's pray for Sister Jones. And uh, Sister, yes, yeah, let's pray for Sister Jones. Yeah, she's here this morning. Pray for her too. And also Brother Evan Washington and that family. Amen. Prayer is always in order and prayer is necessary. And we may not know it all the time, but let's pray for those who are traveling. There are people who are traveling right today. And there are some who are going to be traveling out of this vicinity in the next few hours, the next few days. Let's put, keep them on our prayer list as well. Amen. Amen. Let's prepare now to share <clears throat> oh, okay. I don't want to hesitate. I'm hearing some voices, but all right. First, let me take time to meet. Let us take time to meet uh, first timers. We have any first timers today? Anybody? Okay. If, if, if you don't mind, somebody need to stand and speak and present, you know, just let us know who you are today, where you hail from, if you don't mind. Somebody. One, the greatest speaker of the time, all right, all right, that, that'll work. Good morning. Yes. Praise God. <clears throat> yeah. Yes, Glad to have you here too. Amen. Amen. Hey, that's all right. He, he, even if he hadn't said it. I know he's preaching. <laughs> Thank you, my brother, for those very encouraging words. Thank you so much. And thank all of you who are here today. We thank God for the privilege of being in this place of worship today. Amen. Okay.
the hip, see, see, Deacon Brother Preacher Brother Hip, keep me straight. That it's, see, I wouldn't look him behind me, so that they read the scene, okay. My brother out there, you know Jesus will fix it, all right? Let me fix it. Jesus, he will. 
Amen. Amen. Won't he do it, church? Some, some, sometime you might have to just wait a little while. Amen. I think I'm up at the right time now for the right reasons. I'm okay now. Yeah, I appreciate. I appreciate. Sometimes it come from this side. Sometimes it come from that side. Sometimes it come from behind me. If I'm premature and doing something, someone saying something. But I'm gonna ask y'all behind me say it a little louder, cause I, I'm looking at them. I can see them talking. But say it a little bit louder. Pat, me do so. Oh, thank you. Just, just want to thank you. Uh, I do want to say before we uh, share, you know, giving, I want to mention Sister, I believe, Sandra Frazier sent boxes and boxes of uh, what that stuff you put in your hand. That's it. That's why I want to say hand sanitizer. We want to give her credit for that, sending those boxes. Whole lot of boxes back there. I said boxes, but I mean cases, cases of hand sanitizer. Amen. All right. Father, we thank you now for the privilege of being stewards on your program. We thank you, Father, for your leading us in the path of righteousness. We thank you, Father, that you're teaching us to not to give out of constraint, but to give hilariously, joyfully, that your work may continue to go on. We thank you, Lord, for the givers. We thank you for the gifts. In Jesus' name, amen. how wonderful you are glorious is your name we thank you father for this opportunity we thank you for leading guiding us in the paths of righteousness may these gifts be used in such a way they bring honor and glory unto your precious name thank you for the givers in jesus name amen
Amen. Good morning again. Probably wondering why I'm standing up here again. Um, the reason why I'm standing up here is, as you know, today is the ordination service of our uh, deacon candidates. Amen? Amen. And what I am about to do is I'm going to read to you the report from the ordination council that took place yesterday morning. The council consisted of the following ministers, Pastor Molan, Pastor Tyler from Simsville Missionary Baptist Church, Pastor Jackson from Bible Way Missionary Baptist Church, Minister Darby, and Minister McGruder. The deacon candidates present were Deacon Jones, Sneed, Barnes, and Barrett. Pastor Tyler served as the chairman of the ordination council and opened the council with prayer at 10 a.m. precisely. The candidates were led to the council one at a time and the order listed above. The candidates answered a series of questions centered around their role and responsibilities, their role and responsibilities as a deacon in the church and the surrounding community. In addition, each candidate gave a brief statement of their conversion experience. The council questioned each candidate for approximately one hour with the question and answer session of the last candidate ending at two o'clock p.m. With the satisfaction of the answers given by the candidates, the council unanimously recommended the ordination of the Diggy candidates, Jones, Sneed, Barnes, and Barrett, with all minds on one accord, the council convened with prayer at 2.10 p.m. Now, why did I take the, take the um, opportunity to read this? I wanted to, first of all, it is very, very important and also a, pretty much a big deal of what these men went through yesterday. These men worked hard. These men need to be celebrated. And I wanted to wanted everybody to understand the importance of being a deacon. That's the reason why I read the, um, the verses I read this morning. And as, you, as we go through this service, you'll see the importance of being the deacon. Amen? Amen. Amen.
give them one more hand clap of praise. Would you please stand for our hymn of preparation 279 and 257, Standing on the Promises. verse standing on a promise standing on the promises of Christ the eternal glory in the highest I will shout and sing standing on the promises verse 2 standing on the promises when the house By the word, standing on the promises, standing, standing on the promises, standing on the promises, standing on the promises of God, my Savior, standing on the promises, standing on the promises. I'm standing on the promises of God. Verse two. Standing on the promises of Christ the Lord, bound by overcoming daily, 
standing on the promises. Standing. Standing on the promises. Standing on the promises. Standing on the promises of God my Savior. Standing on the promises. Standing on the promises. I'm standing on the promises. Fourth verse, standing on the promises. I cannot fail. Listening every moment to the Spirit's call. Resting in my Savior as my all in all. Standing on the promises. Standing on the promises. Standing on the promises. Standing on the promises. Standing on the promises of God my Savior. Standing on the promises. Standing on the promise. I'm standing on the promises of God. Standing. Standing on the promises. Standing on the promises. Standing on the promises of God my Savior. Standing on the promises. Standing on the promises. I'm standing on the promises of God. Amen. 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 We'll soon, when we all get to heaven, I'll give the sound room a chance to find the numbers for me. They're pretty good. <laughs> it's 168 to B, sound room. I don't know what the A is. Sorry, 468. 429 in the A. Sing the wondrous love. Sing the wondrous love. Sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansions, bright and blessed, here prepare a place. When we all, when we all get to heaven, what a day rejoicing that will be. Fourth verse, on the two.
him praying. Singing and praying with my mind. Stand on Jesus. Singing and praying. Singing and praying with my mind. Stand on Jesus. Singing and praying with my mind. Stand on Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Woke up this morning. Woke up this morning with my mind. Stand on Jesus. Woke up this morning with my mind. Stand on Jesus. Woke up this morning with my mind. Stand on Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Woke up this morning. With my mind stayed on Jesus. He is wonderful. We can trust his promises. Amen. We thank God for this opportunity that he's made available to us. And as long as we live, we want to serve him. Because we love him. Christians should do or are doing things because they love the Lord. That is true, isn't it? We now I can't see that. love the Lord. Jesus asked the group one day why call me Lord, Lord, and do not what I say. Amen. This morning, for just a short while, we want to go to the book of Colossians. In the book of Colossians, I want to share some verses from chapter 3. And someone said, brother, give it, you got to give us a subject. Well, I'll give you a subject. New life in Christ then, okay? The new life in Christ. All right. In Colossians chapter 3, beginning with verse number 1. Paul, make this observation. right into the saint at Colossae. He said, if you then be risen with Christ, we could say since you have risen with Christ, seek those things which are where? Oh. Above. Where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Mm -hmm. Paul took it for granted as a truth that the saints, those who are saints, have already been risen with Christ. In 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Paul writing to the Corinthians make this statement. Therefore, if any person be in Christ, no if and the guesswork about this, if any person be in Christ, he or she 
is a new creation. New life in Christ. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Whatever the former walk of life was, once you are in the Lord Jesus Christ, once you have accepted him as your Lord, your Savior, once you've established a relationship with him, things change. Matter of fact, you don't want to do the thing that you used to do. Because you don't want to grieve the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. It is possible to grieve the Holy Spirit. When we step over the line and do the thing that we want to do in and of ourselves, coming from the flesh, not being of Christ, we grieve the Holy Spirit. You don't want to do that, do you? It says, set your affection on things. I'm in verse 2 now. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. Now, it's Paul is not talking about don't. Don't appreciate the home you live in. He's not talking about don't appreciate the car that you drive. He's not talking about don't appreciate that big old bank account some of you have. But he is saying don't let those things come between you and the Lord. You know, things can get in the way. Your agenda sometimes conflicts with the things of the Lord. And you might know what you ought to do, but something else becomes more pressing and you don't do it. Oh, I'm not appointing, I'm not appointing accusing fingers out there because we all sometimes fall short. Well, now, those of you who don't fall short, you need to talk to me and hit, listen and help me out a little bit because I need to know what you know. Amen? Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. In other words, Paul is saying to Christians, not just that policy, not just to the Colossians, but he is saying to Christians everywhere. Right now we in Colleen. He's saying to Christians, occupy your mind. Focus your mind on those things above. Look at his rationale in verse 3. For well, you did. Somebody might be pinching themselves, seeing if they're still here. But that old Adamic nature in every human being was dealt with at the cross. Someone will say, well, God eradicated the old Adamic nature when Jesus hung on that cross. 
If you believe that, someone has sold you a bill of goods. Because that old, uh, that old Adamic nature, if you don't watch yourself, will rise up again. That old, that old Adamic nature, I'm talking about that old sinful nature, will raise its ugly head one more time. And one more time. And one more time. And I tell, I tell you this, he's going to be raising his head as long as we are on this earth. You said, no, 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 brother. I'm a child of God. I got a new walk. I got a new talk. I love the Lord. Good for you. You just keep that going, okay? But every time Satan get a chance to throw in his punch, and the closer you attempt to walk with the Lord, the more he'll try to throw in some punches on you. Oh, uh, y'all didn't get what I just said. Right about that. Amen. Because the one thing he does not want man to do, first he doesn't want you to be saved. He doesn't, he don't, he doesn't want you to be saved. And then once you get saved, he doesn't want you to be real in what you're doing. Just, 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 just pretend a little bit. Make the folks thank you for walking to walk. Make them thank you are talking to talk. Make them think you are thinking the thoughts. But just don't be real. Well, that's what he wants to happen. You know, just, just fake it. Fix it where everybody can say these nice things about you. But just don't be real. Paul says here, for you're dead. Your life is hid with Christ in God. Oh, that's a, that's a sermon in itself. Our lives, once you have become, once you have become a saved child of God. Once you have become a saint, your life is, in God's sight, is hid in God with Christ. That, look, look, look at the verse, verse three again. For you are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. God has arranged this thing in such a way for the believer that when he sees, well, matter of fact, he's not looking at the believer so much, but he's looking at the believer's life that is hid in Christ. That's why the Holy Spirit will come along and let you know when something has just gone south. That's his job. And when God brings something to my attention that needs correcting, it's no use of me trying to argue with him. He's trying to help me. For you are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. God sees the child of God in Christ as a new creature. Now, maybe I should say a new creation. When Christ, who is our life, I'm in verse 4 now. When he shall appear, then shall you also appear with him. In glory. What a joy it is to be a saint. What a joy it is to be a child of God. What a joy it is to be, when I say a child of God, I mean a saved child of God. What a joy it is to be able to say our Father who are in heaven, holy or hallowed be thy name. And then to go on and say, thy 
kingdom come. Thy, listen to this now, thy or your will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. You know, wouldn't it be a great thing if God's will all over this earth was done? Wouldn't it be a great thing if God's will even in, what's that place over there in the east, in the east coast, Ukraine, God's will was done? That men and women would love one another? As God tell us to love one another. But I'm afraid that everyone does not love his or her fellow man or fellow woman. I guess that's a good word. I don't know. Maybe I coined that with myself. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall you also appear with him in glory. Now, let me just fast forward here just a moment down to verse number 12. Talking about the new life in Christ now. Being a new creation, every child of God. Verse 12. says, put on therefore as the what of God? Uh, the elect of God. God. God made choice of us. He didn't have to do it. There was nothing that commended me to him. There was nothing that commended you to him. But scripture says about the saint you have been elected. It says, put on therefore as the elect of God. I guess I could say it like this. You get out there in the yard and get out there in the garden, get out in the flower garden and work all day. Get sweaty. Clothes get dirty. Then you say, I got to run down. No, no, I'm saying go to church. I got to go. No, I'm not saying church because that wrong day you're working there. I got to run downtown. But you all dirty. You know what you do. You prepare to put on a new set of garments. Am I right? Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, put on some new clothes. Not only are we the elect of God, God has made us holy. So I said, brother, who are you talking about? God has made us holy. Well, if you're not holy, you might not belong to him. God has, thank you, baby, I heard you back there. God has set us apart. That's what the holy in this sense means. We have been set apart. Not only have you been, are you elected of God, not only are you holy, but the next word after the and, and what? Beloved. That's our status right now. Paul says, put on, because of the fact that you've been elected, because of the fact that God has set you apart, because of the fact that he loved you, put on something. Take off those filthy rags. Put on bowels of mercies, kindness. Mm -hmm. Talk to the saints. Now, he's not talking to the saints at this court, okay? The saints got to become saints before God talking to them on this. Humbleness of mind. 
Don't think of yourself more highly than you ought to think. Meekness. Long suffering. Forbearing one another. And doing what? Oh, you got it. It's right. It's in the book. Matter of fact, I see it's up there now. I keep looking back. So Sister, Sister Joan has assured me she's a pastor. I can put it up there quick. You not announce the scripture. I I I can put it up on the screen. She's I've been trying to get y'all about that for years. And you finally got it. I said, Joe, we didn't know exactly what you were talking about. I didn't. Anyway, forbearing one another. And here's a biggie here. Forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel, quarrel, uh, animosity against any, even as Christ forgave you. You know, Christ could have held a lot of things against us. I say he could have held those things against us that were plaguing uh, our lives. But he didn't do it. Even when he was hanging on the cross, his tormentors, Christ prayed, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they what they are doing. Oh, they know they are crucifying. Yeah, they knew that. But they didn't know the end result of what they were doing. Because Christ, before he could be resurrected, had to go through the doors of death. And that's what they would do. They were putting him to death. But they didn't know they were working right into God's program. They thought they were getting rid of him what they were doing was set the stage so that God could forgive any man, woman that came to him. Oh, I, I know that. Well, Y'all can look at me like I'm wrong. Go ahead. Some people look at me like, what you talking about? <laughs> Forbearing one another. I'm reading verse 13 again. Forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. I've been places, now you say, I, you may say, I've never, you, know, you have never been to these kind of situations. I've been places where people, they had two rows, you know, we had three tiers in here, but it had two tiers in the church. And some folks in the church house had so much animosity against the other person, if they were sitting on the right tier, they would have to go to the left one or the center one. I don't want, you more, I don't want to sit on the same row of pews they said no. Boy, that's, that's some deep stuff there. Something needs to be forgiven there. Am I right about it? All right, even as Christ also did for you, do for others. And then verse 14, as I get ready to move up to a close, and above all, after you have done all these other things, we're not talking about a, we're not talking about a do do religion here, because I don't look at myself as a religious man. Right. I don't know how you look at yourself. Because it was religious folk that put Jesus on the cross. It was religious people who said, crucify him. It was, it was am I saying it right? It was, I don't know, y'all help me here. 
Yeah, okay, now some te teachers have written it right. It was religious people who say, we don't want this man to rule over us. But God sent him into the world and one of his titles were Messiah. Messiah mean ruler, Messiah mean king. That was one of his titles. I heard y'all singing about he, he's wonderful today. That, that was the title too, he was wonderful counselor and all that. Yeah, he came to rule and to reign over the people whom God first called out of Abraham. Jesus would have, even after, let me just wind this thing up, even after they crucified him, after they had buried him, even after he had risen from the dead, stayed on earth with the disciples 40 more days. Even after he had gone back to glory. Do you know what Jesus would have done had the people that he came to save, had they accepted him? Now, don't get me wrong, some did. But I'm talking about that the nation of Israel accepted him. Jesus would have come back and set up his kingdom. But they rejected him. It was already stated in prophecy that the nation of Israel would have to go through what was called the tribulation, that seven years on earth, where I don't want to be living when that happens. They would have to go through the tribulation. And then Jesus would have turned right around. Following that tribulation period, he would have turned right around and come right back and set up his kingdom. But being that they rejected him, you know what God did? God says, I'm going to look out among all the peoples of the earth and I'm going to call me some more people. I thank God he did that. Because part of those more people were us Gentiles. Somebody said, I don't appreciate that. Well, you may as well appreciate it because many of the things God said to Israel was for Israel, but for the Jews. I'm glad God already had in his mind before the foundation of the world that he would reach out into the world and call himself a people. And guess who those people are? The church, we are. We are that which, I'm just going by what scripture says that, we are that which makes body to Christ. And he is the head of the body. So we ought to walk in lockstep to what he says. After all, uh, commands come down from the head. Isn't that right? I mean, you know, look at you, you military men and military women out here. No private runs a battalion. Nothing against the private, you privates, but they didn't, Cause commands got to come down from top. Am I right? Military people got to come down from the top. Come down. Let me go. On. Someone put on something in verse 14. Put on, what's that big old word? All right, give me another word for that. 
Ah, you said it to me. I, I like that. Love, put on love. Which is the bond of perfection? The Bible says love covers a multitude of sin. If you see me in a fault, not a real ugly fault, but you see me in a fault, don't go around telling everybody else about it. Come talk to me. <laughs> well, I, listen, I, I, you know what's going on up here now. I'm preaching. Somebody said, no, you're not preaching until you get in the third gear. Forget the third gear. I'm going to stay in first gear probably. Yeah, just, I mean, you got something against me. Don't tell everybody else what you got against me. You know, boy, if that would happen, I tell you what, it would be so much light in the city of Colleen if all Christians would go to one another and let them know, you know, here's my, uh, what we call it, pet peeve. That's what those things are, pet peeves I have with you. Let's see, can we talk it out and work it out? Instead of getting on the website, You're getting on what? What's that thing that? They, oh, somebody who that said? I wasn't gonna say it by myself. I got some help. Instead of getting on Facebook, not only putting your business out, but putting everybody else's business out. Boy, I'm making some people upset at me now. Probably because you're talking about Facebook, man. That, that's my pastime. Facebook. <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. Don't hurt me. Help me. When I was teaching school out there in Nolanville, I would have a student would come up to me and probably asking questions about some assignment, something like that. And I'm sitting there thinking, you could do this yourself. But the student wouldn't have come to me for help had they not needed the help. So this young lady was said, Mr. Milan, don't work against me, work with me. I never forgot what that student said, work with me, don't work against me. Let, Christians, let's work with each other and not against each other. Oh, I can find fault with just about everybody that I meet. I could look at your shoes. I don't like your shoes. I could look at your tie and say, like my daddy would, I always talk about what my daddy would say, because they, they spoke a language that I didn't understand all the time. He wouldn't say your tie is crooked. he said your tie is cricket. <laughs> it took me a long time to figure out he was saying this was crooked. Yeah, let's work with saints, 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 saints. Let's work with each other and not against each other. Here's what Paul says it in chapter 13 and chapter 13 of 1 Corinthians. He makes this statement. 1 Corinthians 13, 13. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor. And though I give my body to be burned, but have not, you see it, you're looking at it. It might be up there by now. I hadn't looked around. It is up there. Um, verse 13, I'm going to read it again. And though I bestow all my goods to feed, the poor. And though I give my body to be burned, 
but have not love. Paul says it profit, profits me nothing. Now let's back up a minute. Look at some verses previous to or prior to verse 13. Look at verse number four. You see it? I like the word love in there. You know, yeah, charity. It's, it's okay. But that's what you mean. Love does what? Suffer long. long. Love is what? There's something that love does not do. Doesn't envy. It doesn't pole vault itself. You know, it doesn't put itself above everybody else. It's not puffed up. I'm just going down the scripture now. In verse 5, it says, does not behave itself how? Unseemly. Love seeketh not her own. Love is not easily provoked. And look at that next phrase. Thank you. You've already said it. You've already read it. Thinking no evil, rejoicing not in iniquity. Just because this stuff is going on in our world today, it doesn't make us happy. What's going on in not only in uh, in the Ukraine, but what's going on in the United States? Doesn't make us happy. Rejoicing not in iniquity, but rejoices in what? In truth, in the truth. He then going on said, beareth all things, believeth all things, that in all things they believe it that which is true, hopeth all things, endureth all things. And then Paul get out into verse number eight, he says this, say love never failing. When Jesus was hanging on the cross, he still loved man. Those who are on earth right now and who refuses, or not refuses, but refuse to acknowledge who he is, he still loved them. Those who are walking the way that they want to walk and talking the talk that they want to talk and thinking the thoughts that they want to think, regardless to whom it hurts, Jesus still loved them. The thief that was hanging on the cross, one was berating him and one was taunt, he was taunting him and he was saying all manner of evil things about the Lord. Jesus loved him as well. But then that one fellow hanging on that cross, he said something, he said, he looked at his friend while he was hanging on the cross. Don't you know who this is? No, he didn't know who he was. Because had he known who he was, he wouldn't have been berating him. And there were some at, on the foot of the ground telling him, if you are the son of God, if you be the son of God, get off that cross. In other words, show us that you are the son of God. But that's the last thing they ought to want it. They should never want it should have wanted Jesus to voluntarily come off that cross himself. Because had he come out, had he come, had he come down from that cross before he died, we'd all be in trouble today. I'm glad today that he stayed on the cross. I said, I'm glad today that he allowed them to pierce him in his side. 
I said, I'm glad today, church, that he allowed them to put a crown of thorn on his head. I don't know about you right now, but I'm glad today that he allowed them to pluck out his beard. You notice what I keep saying? He allowed them to do it. Because had he not loved man, he no doubt would have annihilated all of those who were around the cross, all of those who were in Jerusalem, all of those who were in the land of Israel. And you can put the whole geographical area there. Matter of fact, Jesus could have spoken one word, and man all over the world would have to lay down and die. But I'm glad today that he stayed on the cross. He stayed there. Somebody tells me, I believe he said, from the sixth to the ninth hour. Yeah, he stayed there. Uh, even his son hid itself. Darkness, I think I'm right about this. Darkness covered the face of the earth. And when the prophet said the moon, the moon dripped in blood. I'm glad today that he let them, notice I'm saying he let them take him off the cross. I'm glad today he let them put him in a borrowed tomb. I'm glad today that he let them roll a stone in front of the cave. Oh, yeah, I'm glad today that he stayed there until his work was done. I'm glad today that once he got ready to go back home, he told some fellows, he said, come on, let's go home. He led captivity. I'm in the Bible, y'all. He led captivity captive because there were those down there who were captive in paradise, they needed to get out of paradise and go to glory. You see, when I leave here, I don't know about you today, but when I leave here, I'm not looking to go to paradise. Because Jesus, listen to it now, Jesus emptied paradise. He took everybody out of paradise, and he took them back to glory. But those who were on the other side of paradise, they were in a place called hell. That place had not been emptied. It had been enlarged. You know why it's been enlarged? Because there's so many more who are going to follow him down there. I'm glad today that Jesus is in heaven, sitting at the right hand of the Father. The Father says, sit thy here until I make your enemies your footstool. One of these days, every knee is going to bow. I say, every knee is going to bow. Every tongue is going to confess that he is who he say he is. He is the light of the world. Is that right? He is the salt of the earth. He's my savior. He's mine, all oh, mine. You can say the same thing. He's mine, all oh, mine. Is he all right? I say, yes, he's all right. Let the words of Christ dwell in you. Oh, Christian, how richly in all wisdom. Teach it and admonish and one another. In what? Psalms. And hymns. And spiritual songs. Singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. It's just some about good singing. I love good singing. I think it was yesterday. I'm going to ask Brother Barry, I asked you this twice, maybe three times. I say, Brother Barry, he, yes, Pat. I said, the choir singing tomorrow? That was yesterday. <laughs> he said, he said, he said, we got a, we got a, we got a representative 
rep we have representatives coming from the choir, trio coming. I said, okay. And I, and I, 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 I told somebody, listen, that choir is greater P. The songs that they select and sing are not that hocus focus stuff. Now, maybe I'm offending somebody here. I don't mean to offend you. But some of these people that are singing these hymns and songs, some hocus pocus stuff they made up on their own. But at Greater Peace, you don't hear that kind of stuff. Oh, oh let me close now before I make somebody else sing. Yeah, yeah, just let me get them to read these last, these last two verses. These last verse one more time, then I'm going to be through. The verse I was reading was 16. I believe it was. And let the words of Christ, well, maybe I hadn't read it, but I'm reading it. Let the words of Christ dwell in you how? In what? Doing what? And admonishing one another. And yeah, I did read it in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. I'm glad Paul said that. Some of us can't enunciate our word properly when we're trying to sing. We don't breathe properly when we try to sing. But you know what I can do? I can sing in my heart. I'm trying to help somebody now that don't have that singing voice. That's all I'm doing. But I can sing it in my heart. Whoa. And some of you can just let it out so melodiously. You can just bring it out. They just Everybody can enjoy. But I can enjoy singing in my heart. Yeah, am I right about that one? And spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. Let whose word? Christ's word. Do what? Dwell in you richly. To what degree or how deeply? Huh? And that's right. In all that you do. That's from the close out with. Verse 17. And whatever you do, Christians, in word or deed. Now, Paul didn't put this in this verse, but I'm going to say, and thought. That, 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 that's not in this verse, but it's in the Bible. It says, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Doing what? Giving thanks to God and the Father by him. There's nothing wrong with it. I'm going back, to, going back to Mississippi now. That's where I was bred born, I think. But, but there's nothing wrong. My daddy used to say it like this. We need to turn a little humble, thanks. I said, what do you mean turn? Turn a little humble. He was talking about we need to pray. Let's turn a little humble, thanks. That means let's pray. That, isn't that what he says here? And whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. When we pray, we pray. You know, we close our prayer by saying this. It's in the name of Jesus. We pray in his name, don't we? Amen. Pray to the Father. Look into the Holy Spirit to guide us in what we ought to say and what we are not to be saying. It ought not to be a selfish thing with me. Amen. Those of you who know how to pray, thank you for praying for me. Thank you for praying for my wife. Matter of fact, let me just make it plain. Thank you for praying, praying for the whole church. Father, we thank you. We thank you for who you are. You are all and in all. We thank you. We thank you for your leading. We thank you for guiding us in the path of righteousness for your namesake. Thank you even as we walk through the valley of the shadow 
of death. You're with us. We thank you. We thank you, Lord, for being with us all night last night. Thank you for awakening us this morning. We thank you. We thank you, Lord, for saving souls that have not yet been saved. Wherever they are, all over this land, all over the world, Lord, wherever they are, you're still in the saving business. And we say thank you. And Lord, let men, women, boys, and girls come now while your grace is sufficient. Because one day you're coming back and you're going to have to judge this world. It will be no saving in your judgment. But we don't want that to happen to anybody. Let men be saved before you have to judge this world. Because we know you got to do it. Father, if there's anyone in this sanctuary this day who heard your word at some time in their lives, but they're now willing and ready to receive the truth of the gospel, that Jesus Christ was crucified, that he was buried, that he rose on the third day, and that he's willing to come and save all of those who would put their trust in him. We pray that you would save souls today. In Jesus' name, amen. As we, and we usually stand on this, those, there may be some in here who are not able to stand. As we offer or extend the invitation to salvation for anyone who will say yes Lord may we stand now and have what we call rightly so an invitation song you can come to Jesus right where you are you can come you come to him in your heart now we we at we ask people sometimes, if you don't mind, step out on the faith that you already have in your heart. Make that, make that step. It even it makes it even real, real -er. I don't know why that's a word in that, but I'm going to say it. When you say, yes, Lord, and you say, Lord, I'm coming to you. It's showing something. You've already come to him in your heart. Now confess him with your mouth. You believe him in your heart, confess him. The saints of God ought to have a testimony concerning the goodness, the mercy, and grace of the Lord. 94 and the A, 103 and the B, near the cross. 94 near and the A, 103 cross. and the B, near the cross. Near the cross, near the cross. Lord, keep me there. Oh, every day. Keep me there. Jesus, keep me there. Jesus, keep me near the Jesus, keep There's me. a precious fountain. Precious fountain. Free to how many? Free to Our healing stream. The healing stream. Flows from Calvary. Oh, Mountain. Lord Jesus. It was in the cross. It all happened at the cross. Be my glory. Be my glory. Till my raptured soul shall find rest. Rest beyond the river. Rest beyond the river. Verse 2, near the cross. Near the cross. Oh, a trembling soul. 
love and mercy found me. Love and mercy found me. There the bright morning star. Look at what look at Shed look at what he did, look at what he's still doing. Verse 3, near the cross, O Lamb of God. Oh, near the cross. Bring it seen before me. Help me walk from day to day. Every day, Lord, every day. With his shadows over me. With those me in the cross in the cross oh, in the cross be, be my my glory glory ever lord till my raptured soul till my raptured soul just shall find Please be seated. The rear. One more time in the cross. In the cross, oh, in the cross. Be, be my, my glory. My glory. Till my rapture. Till Rest beyond, beyond the, the 